Good evening. Okay, we welcome you to this session where we'll be having a conversation between panelists and you parents and also the young people who are here. So you are most welcome for this session. And before we begin, I'd like, I'd like to pray so that we can start. Okay, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful this evening. We thank you, Lord, for the way that you have brought us here, even to be able to deliberate on our adolescents and young adults. We just pray for your guidance and that we'll be able to, to answer the questions that all of us have as teenagers, as adolescents, as, as young adults, and also as parents, so that we, we help our adolescents and young adults to maximize their God-given potential. Lord, we pray that you lead us in everything we'll do today. We're also praying for those who are planning to join us, that you will hasten their steps so that we can be blessed together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Are you hearing me? Yes. Yes, oh, yes okay. we do hear you. Okay, if you can hear us, uh, it's good. Now, I'd like to start by introducing the panelists. So the panelists should put their cameras on so that we see them. Okay. I can see Nicholas Kimtai. Nicholas yes. is a young professional who is representing uh, the young people. You'll be asking some of the questions that... Adolescents and also young adults ask, especially of the male gender. So welcome, uh, Kim Tai. Uh, the other one is Victor Dinda. Victor, we need to see your your face. It is on. I can see. I'm able to see. Okay, I can see you, Victor. Let me introduce you. Dr. Dinda Victor Odiambo is a lecturer in medical laboratory medicine in the School of Public Biomedical Science and Technology at Masinde Muliro University of Science and Technology. He is an expert and mentor in digital learning in tertiary institution and an associate director of the Institute of Open and Distance and e-learning, he is married and a father of two. One of the children is a young adult, the other one is a, a little baby. Uh, I don't know whether I can see Phoebe. Phoebe, are you there? Phoebe Mura, are you there? Okay, I think she is joining us. She said she is logging in, so we'll give her some opportunity. Uh, I'd like to, in, to welcome another panelist. He is Leopard Reef in, and he's a German educationalist engaged in mobile gamified health literacy programs on mental health and reproductive health. So he does a lot of games, online games with the, the children as he teaches a number of issues or topics. So he'll tell us more about what he's doing. Now, there is another facilitator or panelist called Mary Wairimo Karongo. She's also about to log in. She's a counseling psycholo psychologist with the Ministry of Health, deployed worked in various governmental institutions for the last 27 years in different capacities. She is currently a Deputy Director Psychological <coughs> Counseling. Wairimo is also a member of Kenya Counseling Psychological Association and she has two young adults and one adolescent. So as we wait for Phoebe Mora, she's a young professional and a teacher at Hillcrest International School. Nicholas Kimtai is a teacher at Boone House School. 
And I am your host, I'm Dr. Rebecca Wambua, an educational expert with 18 years of experience at the school level and 14 at the university level. I am a mother of three young adults and I've authored a number of books, which I'll be telling you uh, later on. And the books are on questions. One is known as the wise, it's about questions that young people ask uh, adolescents between zero to 18 years. And the other one is, no, sorry, between 10 to 18 years. And the other one is a book known as The House. The House is a, an essential guide for parents and teachers in helping the children maximize their God-given potential. So that is a, a brief about our panelists this evening. And we are going to begin with Nicholas. As I said, Nicholas is representing the adolescents and young adults of the male gender. So he'll be telling us some of the distractors that young people face, especially as adolescents and as young professionals. Nicholas? We were asking what are some of the hurdles or distractors that face that young people face. Nicholas, your microphone is off. Can oh, sorry, you? sorry, sorry. Okay, now sorry. I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. One of the distractors is peer pressure that teenagers face and i would like us to first of all understand the term peer pressure is an influence that you have to do something because you want to feel accepted and valued by your friends it can be positive as well as negative depending on the situation now, uh, I had this uncle of mine who around uh, 2016, when I had completed my form for, he introduced me to a bad staff in courts. And I don't know, maybe when we interact with families, I don't know why I see that it is from the uncle side that tends to spoil uh, other, other family members. Now, by then, I was a teenager who was very inquisitive about the world. Uh, this, uh, this is because I saw the freedom of completing my studies. He told me, do you know that uh, you are now a big boy and no one can restrain you easily? I said, uh, of course, yes, my, my uncle. Then one evening, we boarded a motorbike. We went to the outskirts of my hometown. Then we reached somewhere. He took me to a local pub uh, that used to sell some alcohol. Then he told me, oh, what is your favorite? Then I said, mm, I don't know, because by then I was this green boy from just school. Then he told me my favorite is Guinness. And he told me now, because you are new, you can begin with Guarana. Hope uh, you know that brand. Then um, he requested it was brought I sipped for a while, then I, with, within 15 minutes, I was feeling like uh, I, would, I, I would fall any time. Then uh, it continued for a while, let's say three months. Then till I said enough is enough because this one was tending the principles of my life. Because now I could feel as if I'm going to be lost. Yeah, I'm going to be lost. Then I terminated completely. 
of course, he continued with it. And I'm sure up to now, he still takes. But on, on my side, I said no. So that was about a peer influence. He wanted me to swim in his life. But I knew the consequences that this uh, staff has. You know, I've heard stories that uh, it affects your health, affects your performance, and so on. Uh, the, this tract, number two, that I'm going to talk about is parental negligence. And this happens when your parent fails to provide the basic needs that you have to be having so that your life is smooth. Now, um, when my parents uh, decided to separate a decade ago, my my life, uh, my education life seemed to be to come to a halt, to come to a certain. Yeah, okay, it seemed as if I'm not going to progress with my studies. So I felt like sitting on the edge of a razor plate. You know, the rosy life we used to be having turned to be unknown ditch. We seemed, I seemed as if I'm walking through the tunnel because uh, I can I can remember we we used to feed using a big spoon, but when they parted their ways, when they decided that they are not going to stay together, life became a Kalahari desert. Now basic needs uh, to some extent seemed like inappropriate word that appeared mistakenly in an Oxford dictionary. Now, the impact out of it delayed me, of course, to join my high school. I, because I was this passionate young person, I said I have to fulfill my dream of completing school. And I worked hard. I pushed, I could revise each and every day without uh, their support. Now, while I was working, studying, work as studying smart, some teachers could identify me and say, now this young boy has got a potential in his life. We're gonna support him. Yeah, we're gonna do something to ensure that at least he reads, he studies. And I can remember uh, there was a Alwisha who connected me with um, some scholarship, with scholarship to enable me to complete my form form. And of course, the government chipped in. So um, up to there, I would like to, to thank God because of the support that I got. Yeah, without, uh, because of this impact known as parental negligence. Uh, it is still there, I, I face, but for now I'm, I'm, I'm grown up. I, I, I work hard to ensure that I, provide basic needs to, uh, for myself, and I can also assist someone. And I can offer uh, emotional support to any young adult, a teenager, who is facing the same challenges I faced. I have to tell him there is life, yeah? There is tomorrow, you have to push on. And above all, to keep on praying to ensure that 
God also sees him and ensures that he gets what he is praying for. Now, I would, lo- I would talk about um, the third uh about i would talk about low self-esteem low self-esteem and i would like us to understand this term that low self-esteem is when someone lacks confidence about who they are and what they can do they often feel incompetent valued or inadequate and I would like to refer to the distract number two, that is uh, parental negligence. So when it happened, I, I, I felt like I laughed. I felt inadequate, yeah, that maybe my life is going to end. Yeah, I felt sometimes I would feel very low that I'm not going to make it, yeah that my life is going to end so i i could sort a lot of maybe guiding and counseling to ensure that everything runs smoothly and um you know in high school life because i was a teen i we could interact with this let me let me uh, in quotes, bad boys, that they were telling me, Nicholas, why is it that uh, we on our side? Maybe some could tell you that, you know what, Nicholas, I do have a, I do have a girlfriend. Yeah. You know, it was a, bi- a period of adolescent, and sometimes I could, hi, what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> So it means that if I don't have, and the time is yet, it's like I'm yet to make in life. And on my part, I was saying, no, that is not the way. Yeah, things will come, things will happen by themselves at the right time. And um, uh, back then, you know, uh, maybe being in high school, you could see someone having beards and you alone don't have. So someone could just come and say, Nicholas, it seems you are, he could belittle you to some extent <laughs> because now maybe the guy has got muscles and maybe you, you don't have you as maybe has delayed because of God's reasoning or God's own purpose. And I pushed on. So um, these teens, most of the time, especially the boy child, faces those challenges have talked about. And um, about peer pressure, we need to guide them, the teens, to, okay, peer pressure is not bad as long as a group is aiming uh, for success, is aiming to succeed. Maybe you can say our goal today is to succeed at the end of the year. Our success today or our goal is to form or to have a these young ones to refrain themselves from bad stuff, from uh, being introduced or being absorbed into the negative world because their minds are growing, they want to explore more, and so on. Concerning uh, parental negligence that uh, I felt this impact 
back then i know maybe most of us who are here are young maybe are young adults maybe they will be planning to have family in future and so on it is very good of you if you plan pro- properly pro- uh, if you plan very well that you are kid you have to cater for everything they have to be having basic needs yeah if it is education you have to provide for food shelter fees and so on so that um, they won't feel that impact of being curtailed from uh, exploring their lives and so on concerning self esteem if there is a teen who is feeling alive of course you have to you have to show that you have you have to show compassion yeah someone who is feeling incompetent you have to tell that teen you have to tell that boy child that yes you can yeah yes you can achieve your goals apart from maybe 1 2 3 yeah so that at least they feel that ah, at the end that they have to do something good and that marks uh, the end of my presentation okay thank you thank you for highlighting the distractors especially among the young people of the male gender now there's something that you have said which is uh, very important uh, about the impact of separation on the children i think yes. sometimes as, as parents maybe go to court to divorce and there is a as they separate sometimes they don't think about the impact on the children so it's good you you raise that concern here so that the parents who are here can be aware that uh, as they are thinking about their separation or divorce they should always consider the the rights of the child because the the child did not contribute to the evils that have happened in the family and they they need to be taken care of and i think that one is also in the legal aspect where the parent needs to continue providing for the child up to the age of 18 years or even post that so thank you uh, victors a number of issues have been raised uh, such as peer pressure parental negligence and the issue of girlfriends for the young men that's a, a serious issue and also physical changes young people compare themselves especially as adolescent maybe this one has broken the voice this one has not this one is muscular this one is still has not changed so sometimes they they have those issues and they feel they are different and that causes them to have low self esteem while those who are muscular they have broken their voice it raises their esteem so maybe victor what would you say about these issues thank you thank you dr rebecca for giving us the opportunity just to discuss about the young adults with the, all of us you can actually agree with me that this is a very turbulent thing very turbulent in such a way that they are discovering themselves they are disturbed because they are looking for identity turbulent because they don't know what's coming next yet they think they can reach where they want at this same time so uh, many of our youth are really struggling with a lot of things so that they can actually be able to be to mature up and most of us and most of everyone may have passed through this and i know those days not much uh uh keen i was taken on it i would say that um in terms of peer pressure 
it is important that we have councils with our children, both in school and even out of school. Some of them have not discovered themselves and could easily. Somebody is trying to call me. Somebody is trying to call me. Uh, sorry, I can you hear me back? I think I lost connectivity. Are you able to hear me? Sorry. We had lost you briefly. Okay. Somebody called and interrupted my, 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 my session with my phone. So I'm saying here, the self-esteem is quite an important thing that you can even see some of the things that happen when somebody is being ridiculed, they even come and take, care, take off their lives. Give me some few minutes. So, yeah. There's some scrubbing about uh, Victor's uh, audio. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we can't get we can't get Victor. Okay, Victor. Can you me and be back now? Yeah, okay. but we had lost you. Is it your network? You know, when some, I'm using my phone network and becomes not very easy when somebody calls. All right, I'm back now. I've okay, you have disappeared. We, we, we can't see you even your head. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, now there. All right. So what I'm trying to say here is that in the, this is a very turbulent uh, stage of life, which is not taken care of and lead to disasters. And we have actually seen some of the disasters that have happened in the recent past. Very young children, adolescents are taking away their lives because of very simple things that can be handled. I know that uh, some of the peers can actually tease you because of their, uh, maybe their muscles and the rest. But this is actually a source of identity. If an adolescent is able to identify themselves, so, Somebody is trying to call me here and he's making me laugh. Just one minute. Hello? Hello, sorry. Somebody is really disappearing me. Hello, can you hear me back? Yeah, we can hear you now. Yes. So I'm um, saying here that when somebody like the rest that are actually having more muscles interfere with you, some of the things that you need to calculate in the early days is identity, who you are, what your capacity, and therefore you should be able to uh, repel some of the negative uh, words that others are also getting. Some of these things can actually be a distractor even in life and even in activities that they are pertaining education. So it's important for us, like parents and guardians that are always with us, that we help our children as we sit in our council so that we can be able to guide them properly. Some of the things like failure, separation, uh, parents separating from each other is always very complex. And at times it, it calls for the parents themselves. And many times, uh, as uh, the host has said, they don't actually remember that there are people who are going to suffer a lot. So it's important for us as uh, 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 parents of the young adults, as you are there, you also as a parent be in that stage. Because if you don't understand them properly, you can easily lose them. When you lose that, they'll find information from others, and some of the information cannot be able to help them. Therefore, in calculating some of these things, the parent must be a good example of what they expect their kids to have. You may be telling a child, please don't smoke, but at times you get well, uh, take one or two packets. Sometimes you're telling your children, please don't come home late, but you, you come at night around two or three, 
So let's start with the example. This will help our children because they are good learners by imitation. And when you are with them, you can easily monitor and guide them as time goes by to be a better person as we proceed. I think that's what I can say for now. Back to you. Sorry for the interferences. I think. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you for that input. Uh, I think you have mentioned some very uh, critical points there. One of them is a role, being a role model. Sometimes as parents, we say, do as I say, but not as I do. Or they are, there's a saying that says that your actions are too loud. I can't hear what you're saying. So sometimes as parents, we are found in this scenario, and therefore it's important for us to check our lives and see that uh, we are doing our best to be good role models to our children. Uh, Nicholas raised the issue of uh, girlfriends. Uh, normally what I've seen uh, in the high school, the children are, uh, they are well checked by the teachers, but immediately they join the university. It's so like now they say, now I'm 18, I'm not under any person. So when they join the university, as I counsel them, there are so many who are facing issues to do with pregnancy. Both the young men and uh, the ladies are affected. The young men realize that now I've made somebody pregnant and I'm a father. So what, what they do is they deny the pregnancy. While the girl is wondering who will support me and my parents cannot support me in this uh, issue. So issues of girlfriends, boyfriends is also a critical issue that we need to spend time and just teach our children or counsel them. Although sometimes uh, being in the current setup where young people in traditional society, the young people would go to their uncles, their aunties, but now in the urban uh, regions, we don't have the uncles and aunties very near. Therefore, it is upon us as parents even to discuss uh, sex education with our children so that when they go to the university or during their free time, during the holidays, they are able to make the right decisions. So Wairimo Karongo is also one of the panelists. Uh, she has joined us. And uh, Wairimo had already introduced you, so people know you. And I'd like to go to Phoebe. Phoebe, as I say, she is uh, a young adult. She graduated last year and she's working at Hillcrest International School. And Phoebe, maybe you can tell us from a, a lady's perspective, uh, do we face the same challenges as the male gender are facing or are the challenges for girls different and how different are they? Phoebe. Okay, good evening. Good evening. I hope I'm loud or uh, audible enough. Yeah, we you can, can hear you. Okay, yes, okay. we can hear you. So, yes, um, we can hear you. Please continue. Okay. So uh, basically, uh, the challenges are more or less the same, but uh, it becomes a little bit tougher uh, uh, experienced uh, from a girl child's perspective. So... Um, if it is the issue of like, uh, I, I will still, I will go back to what um, Kim Tai talked about before I even give out my points, because there are key issues that he mentioned that I feel like uh, the girl child also undergoes, and if I'll just brush over them and then go now to my major point. So if I will touch the issue of parenting that he mentioned, it of course cuts across uh, both the girls and the boys. But it becomes super hard on the girl child sometimes from my perspective because um, uh, it is from uh, this negligence. It is neglecting not, not, not only parents who have separated, but even the ones who live together, but are either too afraid to talk to these uh, children or are just too busy with life to even sit down and talk with their kids or just neglect, they, they, they just don't care. Nowadays, we have parents who are like that. And so these kids lack someone to run to. You know, a kid is 12 years old, 10 years old, and they are, they are, they are almost starting their messes, and they don't know. Yeah. 
sorry about that um they don't know how to go about that so they are also ashamed to even go and ask their peers so who do they run to this cowboy who will of course lie to them that uh, they love them so they'll get wrong advice from them of course so this parenting is really a big issue and it should be focused on actually i was uh, discussing with the friend people feel like the parents are only after um, you studying going out of their house getting money and making them rich you see like uh, you go we'll take you to any school we don't care how you'll survive uh, as long as we provide what we can then the moment you earn or you, you get your, your your job now we will start loving you so that you give us back the money that you you've gotten so they they don't really take keen interest of the needs the emotional needs of this girl child they, they neglect the very few things and this is what actually follows these kids they get uh, uh, traumas from that because they now grow old at the age of 18 and they feel like they want to settle down with someone at 18 or 17 because this person is giving them the love that they never got from their parents the love that they would have wished to get so this person no matter how violent they are no matter how uh, toxic they are no matter how bad they look or not physical looking but um their situation no matter how bad it is as long as they give them the love that they feel they needed they fall in for that and that is causing this early marriages that end within two years the girl ends up with kids as a single mother and is now suffering now actually some of them resolve to um prostitution some of them end up getting these sponsors as we say uh, as as we see uh, actually in our social media so they get these people not because they really want to most of them not because they want to but because they feel the need of um getting the basic things that they really lacked so parenthood nowadays has become a challenge parents are too busy for us they are too busy some are too ashamed to talk to us about these issues as early as 9 years old because nowadays ladies with the food that we eat at 8 years old 9 years old we we could even start our messages at that time so if you don't tell us about these things if you don't teach us about these things the teachers in school will only teach us as they'll teach it as a syllabus not uh, for our own growth so we end up in the wrong hands and uh, we end up making wrong decisions so parenthood is really 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 a big challenge um in this current century so that is what i wanted to to add on the parenthood that um Kim Tai talked about and also the the, the self esteem issues that he mentioned it's actually a, a, as a, as a cause of that lack of that parenting because this child if we look at the the, the abraham maslow's hierarchy of needs if you actually get the most basic ones according to how he mentioned them it will be easier for you to get to the self actualization uh, 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 level so if you lack the most basic ones down there there's no way you'll get to the upper ones there's no way you'll um you, you after the basic needs of course you go to is it security and then you want to be loved and something like that now if you lacked basic needs how you which security do you even need now when that time comes for you to feel like you need to be loved and you lacked that you feel like you're not even actually adequate enough and for the girls we 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 resolve to these bad things that really hurt us because for a boy he can go to mjengo a girl because of our um, i don't know how i can call it but we 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 really think along that line we would want most of these ladies would want to go in for uh ways that will not um how i don't i don't think we have much energy to go to mjengo that's simply what i'm trying to say so they'll go to these cheap methods of going to sponsors and everything you'll get them having um uh, this nowadays these these ladies there are these ladies who go and uh, sell themselves i think we saw this on the news the other day to 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 be sleeping with the dogs they are, they, i don't know how that bad that is but just so that they can get something and you see when these ladies are actually interviewed the basic thing that they talk about the, the 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 bottom line comes back to how they were brought up what they lacked at home what pushed them to that so the self esteem comes as a result of that they now start seeing themselves as not adequate they start seeing themselves as not human enough now 
who can help them so they become hopeless and they have and they end up in hopeless situations so those two cut across both ladies and um, and the gents so the main one that i wanted to talk about now on my presentation will have been number one social media now social media has a big influence on our day-to-day -day lives and it has really changed our perception on everything now we can both use it positively or negatively mostly as teenagers they use them negatively um because of the peer influence of course and the peer pressure so they feel like they are under pressure to to become as their mates in the social media and um they 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 they, they actually have no clue that most of these things are fake most of these things we post on social media are actually just made up so a girl in the village sees me here in nairobi dressed in a way that uh, they would wish to dress and in a very um explicit uh, hotel or something like that and they would wish to have such a life not knowing I, I i'm just in my home in my house in my humble abode and i've photoshopped myself to be somewhere and i've posted on the social media so she'll feel under pressure to be like me and then she'll start engaging herself in so many bad things just to be where i am and yet i'm not even there myself you see so that is one negative aspect of social media Number two, we have the cyberbullying thing, which nowadays is very common. Um, ladies are actually going into um, dating sites. Reason being, they are, they are, they are seeing um, they will want to explore other people, not, uh, not the African men that we have. They will want to explore people from the, 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 the Asian countries. They will want to explore people from the, 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 the American, the Europe countries. So they want to, to have a broad broader view of men or something like that so they will go into uh, these dating apps and uh, they get someone who has a fake account who lies to them that they have money and then they end up in these hotels with them and they end up being killed you see so it doesn't normally end up well it, there, there are very few cases of these people who are having dating sites that really works very few and uh, most of them end up in wrong uh, wrong hands which end up actually hurting them more than they they, they were hurt already so that the pressure is from the social media they see someone who said i met with this guy on facebook and blah 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 and this is where we are today i met this guy on instagram and this is where we are today so they feel like wow so i should be on this and actually i should be responding to all the dms that i'm getting so that i should be like this and if i want to be like this and it means i need to dress like this so i need to be half naked so this man could see my legs I, I need to be dressed in a way that i'm appealing to their ear to their eyes sorry so that pressure from the social media if it's not handled actually from the parental um care from 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 the, the basic level of parenting at home to school of course some schools have safeguarding uh, roles that uh, guide these kids but if it's not if it's not there in the school I'm, I'm thinking it should be there in the house now if this kid is left like that then they will end up in wrong hands but also there are good there, there are good ways of using social media of course but these kids don't know it and of course they want to have fun a kid from uh, 12 years to 16 years wants to explore they want to be the, they, they want to to bring out the best that they can so if you you can't monitor what they are doing. They can't limit that. That is how we end up having kids who are addicts of pornography as early as 16 years, as early as 15 years, 14 years, because they came across this and no one was there to guide them. No one was there to tell them this has negative impacts on your brain and on, on your mind and even in your growth. And because they want to satisfy themselves, I mean, this is the peak of adolescence. So their body is growing. They, 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 they are having funny feelings in their body and they can't even define it themselves. So if they can't get someone to actually control that, it can really get out of hand. Now you can imagine someone who has that feeling and then gets social media and gets a way that um, can, uh, can make her feel even better, then uh, I don't think you can stop her. And by the time we realize that this, uh, kids are actually into such it it is either too late they're already addicts or they have already um gone to uh, uh like it's, it's already almost too late to help them so before this happens can we just go back to who we were from the beginning i would really wish that our parents will go back to the way they were brought up let them bring us up that way let them teach us the basic values that we need you know like um I don't know how to put this, but we don't have aunties who can sit down with us right now 
to teachers and our grandmas maybe um uh, might have time for us to teach us a few things but we have that chance to go home we don't i mean uh, nowadays parents feel like if if i give my kid the, the western kind of life that's the best kind of life i want i don't make kid to go back home shall go so that they can get to know uh, the, my local language i don't want them to get this you know when you go home and then you come back your skin is different yeah you, your legs have cut a card somehow you 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 come back and you look like uh, a math book so most parents don't want that they want their kids to have a soft life so they lack the basic things even that that are supposed to be taught by their grandparents and uh, this is really affecting us because if you're not teaching us then at least take us to those who can teach us and another thing on that also to be careful is that the villages nowadays are actually more rotten than the, than, than the urban centers because um, our villages are flooded with alcohol, actually this illicit alcohol, the, the wrong one. Our villages are um, filled with people who are actually uh, illiterate, but if you expose an illiterate person to the social media world, they become worse than a literate person because once you're exposed and you're literate, there's a way you can actually control yourself. But these village people who are illiterate sometimes and are not well exposed, they actually overdo it. So even as we are planning to take our kids back to their shows so that they can get the knowledge that they need, be careful because our villages are actually rotten more than our, our, our urban centers. So... Um, I'll also touch on the point of societal expectation. That will be my last point. Societal expectation in terms of uh, what the society expects from a lady. That is my my power my power point. Or how will I say it's like it, it has weight uh, out of all that I've presented because it is from it that actually we are lacking um, we are lacking women. I'll say that we only have ladies that are brought up just survive in marriage. We are lacking a woman, a real woman, because you know you grow up and you're told you're supposed to 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 finish school. You're supposed to be married. You're supposed to be having kids in your marriage. You're supposed to be in church. You're supposed to be doing this. So there's already a planned life for you, and they want you to fit in that given life. And if you go even a step out of that single life, you're called an outcast. You know you're supposed to be an outcast in that family. They consider you uh, a, a black sheep of the society or something like that. And it's from that point that we are having increased number of abortions. Why? I mean, a child has been neglected by the parent. She has ended up in the wrong hands. She's gotten pregnant. And of course, she knows that if she goes back with that pregnancy, the parents will kill her. I mean, it's obvious. So what they do is they end up going to these local people to have an abortion. And in the process, because of course, most of them will not afford the the the, the what the, um, the the standard abortion because that is even illegal in Kenya. They can't afford it, so they go for these local ones for two thousand, three thousand shillings that they're given some pills and to do whatever things they do. They end up bleeding to death. And you see, in that case, I'm trying to imagine what will the mother say? What will you say? I mean, you, you didn't, you were not even there for this child. So now that she's died, you, you want to call her your child or whatever. Or this girl will grow and uh, start using um, family planning as early as 15 or 16 or 14. By the time she's 25 and now she wants to start having kids, there are no kids. Because she didn't want to get pregnant, she will disappoint you. You feel disappointed by, this, by the fact that she'll get pregnant before marriage. And yet yourself, you failed as a parent to bring up this child in a way that she'll know why she should not get pregnant before marriage. So let's first of all go to the, let's not build a house starting from the roof. Let's go back and start making the foundation strong before we actually build this house. So if we go back to that parent who will make it well, this kid will not actually fear the pregnancy. They'll not go for it because they know if um, I do this, it is for my own good. It is me who is harming my health. It is, a, it is actually if I start having sex as early as 15, 16, I'm increasing my chances of having cervical cancer. You see, you're, you're constantly affecting your cervix because um, you, you're, you're young, you're, you're still so young and you don't need to be pushing your cervix as much as you'll be doing at that time. So by the time you're getting 45, to 50 there, you're already having cervical cancer because you, 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 you messed your life when you were young. Now, if we give this knowledge to our young kids, our young teenagers, they'll make their own decisions not to, uh, to stop uh, having actually 
early sex or early marriages. So um, on the issue of uh, having uh, kids before marriage, uh, if you didn't, if you feel like as a parent you didn't advise your kids well, when they finally get to the point of having these kids, bring them home and uh, talk to them first before you condemn them. It is wrong. Societally, it, it is seen as a, as, as a taboo. But bring them home, sit down with them, talk with them. Because if you don't do that, even if they'll continue with the pregnancy, they'll end up having postpartum depression. They'll end up having depressed that they even, even the kid that they bring forth is not even healthy because I mean, if you're stressed throughout the pregnancy, how do you even bring forth a kid that is healthy, you know? And that is still your grandchild. So, despite the shame and everything, have time to talk with this kid so that you prevent any other action like that. Because if you neglect that also, they'll still feel under pressure and they'll still go. So, this pressure that we are applying on a girl child is too much and it needs to come down. We as parents need to, to, to bring our pressures down so that um, we, are, we are not um, already lying down a plan of life of how our girl child should live. Let us teach them, pray for them, and let life be as it is. But if they mess, bring them home and talk to them. Don't condemn them because you're not helping. You, you're actually bringing more traumas into their life than they need. So... Um, these expectations are really uh, acting up on, uh, on, 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 on the girl child. And uh, the pressure of, you know, you should not get to 30 before you're married. So this girl will be 27 and she'll be like, well, I think I need to get a man because uh, I'm almost 30 and I'm not getting a man. The aunties are asking, when are you bringing someone home? Blah, blah, blah. So you feel under pressure to get married and you end up having some, some, some goon somewhere who was not also well brought up. And you end up being in a, a life that is not what you planned for. And also the parents are actually separating at, uh, when the, the kids are young and affecting these kids through, through those separations. Because their marriage will not work. They, they were married because of the pressure, because of what the society wants from them, not because they were ready to be, to be married. So that is um, also one of the expectations that are really uh, making a, a girl child to make wrong decisions and end up... Uh, not being women that we expect um, to be in the next society. So uh, the last one I think I'll talk about is the education under societal ex expectation, of course. Um, if, 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 if I, would, I, I don't know if I'm making an assumption because I was in there in those centuries, but I'm thinking before, uh, uh, before the, 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 for, the formal school was introduced, there still was a level of education that the kids used to get and they could still manage their life with that informal education. So the fact that we introduced uh, uh, informal, yes, the fact that we introduced a formal education, we should not use it as a measure on our kids to call them names and actually brand them names forever so that um, if you have not gone to the university, if you have not passed your form four. You're an outcast and as a girl, you're supposed to either go be a house help or something. And that is where you belong. Or get a husband and just be married. Just get out of my house, you see. But if you uh, finish from four and uh, you go to campus, now you're considered the star of the family. And everyone now wants to, 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 to be associated with you, you know. Everyone wants to be, uh, to, you, you are seen as everything. And you go to this university and of course what you're doing there is not what the, the society also wants. So uh, let's, let's not use education as a measure for intelligence or for a lady being a lady. If a girl uh, cannot uh, comprehend some of these things in school, there's a way of motivating her to be better in some things. Nowadays, we have technical institutes. Let take, let's take these kids to these institutions so that they can uh, get what they can do, not what you want them to do. Because this pressure is what is making them feel um, after they have left your house now that they have gone to campus, they are now free from you, they end up doing the things that we do not expect them to do because they were in a cage and now you've taken them to the university where you wanted them to be, but now they feel like they are free and so they want to do every other thing that they missed doing when they were young. And they end up, of course, uh, in wrong hands and doing wrong things.
So let's uh, try to ease in this pressure and also be role models, as, as Victor had mentioned earlier. Let's be role models because um, we, we, you can't, you, you don't uh, uh, drink wine and uh, tell them to, to, to take water. You both need to be taking water. So that will be the end of my presentation unless there's a question or an addition. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Phoebe. I'm seeing somebody called Muzamil. He's saying, hello, my name is Zamil from India, working as a principal in high school. What she explained everywhere, everywhere it's the same, no difference in other countries. So we are happy that uh, somebody has logged in from India and is supporting what you're saying. And both uh, Phoebe and Nicholas have mentioned the role of the parent. So I think the parent has a big role to play. Uh, but let's hear from Mary. Mary, a number of issues have been raised. So maybe... And, uh, uh, one, one second, ma'am. Rebecca, ma'am. It's uh, my pleasure to join in this meeting. And I'm so happy, first time I attend, uh, you know, normally I attend the meeting with the, our uh, Asian uh, teachers are here. So this time I'm so happy and it's my pleasure to attend. And uh, the way she, Phobia uh, Mora, okay, I mean, I don't know how to pronounce that word. What she explained, every word is same. I mean, it's, there is no any difference. Most of the schools we are facing in our kids also the same issues. And whatever she has said, I'm really so happy and, uh, you know, uh, I feel very much useful in this class also. Okay, Rebecca, man, you can continue. Okay. Thank you. Thank you also for sharing your experience from India. Um, Mary Karongo, maybe you can say something about uh, are parents failing? Are they being role models? Are they too busy? But they, I, I have a YouTube channel known as Dr. Rebecca Wambua. And when you go there, I've spoken about peer pressure. I've spoken about uh, some students who told me that they need a relationship with the parents because their parents are too busy. When they're in school, they are, the children are busy in school. During the holiday, parents are still busy. They leave very early, come very late. And therefore, children themselves feel they don't have adequate time with their parents. So Mary, you'd like to say something? Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Rebecca. Uh, there is a there there needs to be a concerted effort by with the parents and the teachers because uh, it looks like most parents have left the duty of bringing up the children to the to the teachers. When you look at the, the issues we are having in schools, be it peer pressure, be it um, Most of the most of the adolescents that we counsel, usually you'll find them having that problem that my parent is never around, they don't care about me, they don't care what I do. They just it's like they dumped me, you know. So I think the parents need to be very careful. Because that is why the children are becoming wayward. Remember, nowadays, there is a lot of, uh, of uh, peer pressure. There is a lot of, uh, you know, the world has become a global village. Just like Mora is saying, the children are learning a lot from the internet. So when, when the parent is not there, then the children have another teacher and you find them emulating what they are saying. So I think it is very important for the parents to rethink and be there for their children. I've seen uh, 
talked uh, I've, I've, I've talked to several parents since schools closed and uh, the story is the same now they are at home we have been told to stay with them for two months eh? they are going to disturb us for a whole two months you know the parents are complaining the teachers have been with those children for three months and they are going to be with them okay you like now you can see the bearing in mind how how short the the breaks were the whole of this year so the teachers have been having these children for like nine months and the parents are complaining that the children will be home for two months they don't know what to do with their with their children so for me i would like to appeal to the parents i believe there are quite several parents who have joined the forum to go back to the to the roots find out what your pa, your children your child is doing eh? once in a while get into their room see what they are doing get the gadgets they are using is it the phone or the the tablet or the laptop get that laptop go through it see what this this child is doing particularly the secondary schools the secondary ch school children they can really do a lot of things and they can be misled easily because them they are still growing up and they will believe a lot of what they see in the internet eh? when the children are in school talk to them openly about these uh, this uh, uh, gayism, lesbianism, cultism, because they are there in schools. They are there in schools, and uh, the, it is the, the children or the adolescents that are introducing each other to these habits. Some of them, maybe they have seen them, uh, they have seen on the internet, others have learned maybe from their home areas from other people but you have to keep talking to the children because when they you know information is power if the child if you talk to the child to your adolescent to this growing youth in your house if you talk to them about all these things even if they depart from from you you are away as long as you've given the correct information you would not be you you would not blame yourself but if you leave your child to be taught by the world of course you should not regret what the child turns out to be so it is important we need to help the children we need also to to know that when we do not when we are not close to our children when they are in school they act up a lot before i joined uh, counseling i used to be a secondary school teacher and sometimes we would get to, uh, students who would claim that they are sick you take them to the hospital at night only to find that the the the, the student is just hysterical when you follow up why the child is hysterical, you are surprised to know that the child is just hysterical because nobody loves him. The parents are not there for the, this, these children. So the child just has, has to act out and go, keep going home, declaring that they are sick, they are looking for attention because they, they feel neglected. So if you, if you give your child love, Make sure you are giving the proper guidance. Then you will find that your child is well rounded, and uh, most of these habits they will not be, they will not develop them. But if, but if you leave your child to be taught by the world, to be taught by the internet, to be taught by the peers, eh, then you we we are going to have a generation that is very misguided. So I think it is very important for this conversation for both the, the students that tuned in and the parents to know that they need each other. Because sometimes you find that even the, the, the children, because they don't know their parents, 
because of that distance, the children do not open up to their parent. So things are happening. The child is just there. You ask the child, do you have a problem? They say, no, they don't have a problem. They stay in their room. Then before you know it, your, your child, I have, um, uh, uh, there is a person I'm counseling. The child, it's not a child, it's a young man who, who, is, who, is, who was in second year doing architecture. One day he just walked out of the house. He left his phone. That is a year ago. The parent does not know where the boy is. And the parent is almost depressed. But he kept on trying to talk to the boy. And the boy would say there is no problem. And you can see the, the fact that he's doing architecture. He had passed very well. But then something happened. The child uh, snapped for whatever reasons. He left home one day and just went away. So when something happened to you, the children, the parents now are affected because these children, they are our lives. So when the child is affected, eh? when, when anything happens to the child, the, the parent is very, very much affected. So for me, what is better? Being there for your child, taking time out to, you know, listen to them, to see whether you can uh, grill them, to know what issues they are going through. Or just saying, okay, he doesn't want to talk, fine. So you leave the child. And now when something happens to the, to this, to the, the, same, uh, the, same, uh, the same adolescent, you are now in depression. I think it is good that we start study, we build confidence in our children, we discuss wide range of topics with the children so that as they grow older and become reclusive, you know, you, you the mostly, they become reclusive as they grow older, they separate from their parents and become more comfortable talking to their peers. But once in a while, if you have been afraid to your child, once in a while they'll open up and tell you something. So I want to encourage the parents who are here that it is very important to keep tabs of the adolescent, know where they are, what they are doing. And if, as, as Mora has also said, if you, you are adolescent girl or boy for that matter, if they fail in this journey of life, if you condemn that child, that child is done. But if you show them love and uh, support them, maybe it's an early pregnancy, support the girl, show them love. Uh, if you do that, the child will <coughs> is likely to reform. Is, they are likely to be in very good health even as they get the, the baby. And they will not rush to get married or even to, to abort. And therefore, you will have saved a life. But if you are condemning and telling the child, okay, you've done this, get out of my house. I never want to see you. If you do that, you have lost that child. You have lost that grandchild. And in future, you might live to regret. So it is important because you are now, if you are, if your adolescent girl is, uh, let's say, 15 years, 17 years, and she's pregnant, you are now the adult. So you are the one to, to guide and to soften, to soften the fall. Remember, this child is really hurt. He, they have gotten pregnant. It's an unwanted pregnancy, and they are they are suffering. So if you tell that girl, now leave my... There is a boy on the other hand. He's in the wrong company. He's, he has taken something. He has, he has uh, dropped his guard and maybe taken something, got into a problem with the school. 
uh, if you send that child away, it makes things worse. The best thing is to support the child, be understanding to the child, and go through the journey of reform, reformation with them. Otherwise, if it doesn't happen that way, then this is going to be a lot of trouble for this youth. Otherwise, for now, that is what I can say. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much, Olimo, uh, for that. Uh, I can see Kamunde saying there has never been training on parenting, family, career, which is the most basic need. So we are being told that there is need for training uh, in terms of uh, parent parenting, and that's why this session has been planned. Mark, uh, Rebecca, yes. Yeah, Re Rebecca, ma'am, uh, just give me one minute and really okay. thanks for yeah. Hello, yes. am I audible to everyone? Yes. Okay. So it's not only parent responsibility to guide the student or guide the child. I think we many teachers are also here. What are the parents responsible, the equal responsibility teachers also? We have to only be guide the student, I mean the young kid. We have to guide them what is bad and what is wrong and what is right. We have to guide them what is bad touch and what is good touch. So what are the responsibilities the parents have, the same responsibilities the teachers also have? Because mostly in a weekdays, only two days or in the daytime, the children are spending in home. Mostly they are with the school only. So our responsibility is that one, to guide the kids and to, to guide them in a proper way. It's not only 100% the, uh, you know, the uh, parenting and we cannot blame simply to the parenting also. Yeah, it is also there, but the same responsibility the teachers also have. We have to, because the, we are getting the kid from grade one onward. From childhood onwards, we are seeing the kid. So from their facial expression also, if they face any problem, if it is a good teacher, they can easily recognize what happened to this kid. So uh, it's my suggestion only, the parenting, the same responsibility, the teachers also have that one. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you for mentioning about the teachers. Uh, in fact, I wanted to say that uh, raising up children is a partnership uh, because uh, the teachers are in school, they observe the children, and it's important for parents to work with the teachers because sometimes teachers see something different or they see trouble where the parent has, has not seen, and therefore they need to work in partnership. So thank you. Thank you for that addition. It's uh, very important. Uh, right now, I'd like to give uh, one of the participants maybe who has a question, you'd like to ask a question, you can show your video and or your, you, can, you can unmute and also show your face as you ask the question. Remember, we are here trying to find a way forward for our adolescents and young adults. And what I'd like to emphasize is that it is important to start when they are young. So we are not waiting up to when they are adolescents so that we start guiding them. The guidance should start as early as possible. So anyone with a comment, maybe as we wait for somebody to comment, I'd like to share just a few points. Um, can you see my, my screen? Yes. Yes, we okay. can see it. Yeah, yes, I can we're able to see you. Thank you. Yeah, I can just share a few points how to manage adolescents and young adults. The first one is knowledge in, is power. And I'm sure that is why we are here. We are here to acquire more knowledge. So as parents, we should equip ourselves with as much knowledge as possible concerning what happens to children at this stage and how best to guide them. It's important to buy useful books also for the children and also for yourself. The other point, I, and I think it has been mentioned, befriend your child. Let your child know that you are his or her best friend 
Although children may show some signs of I don't care attitude, they in, indeed appreciate the advice, of, uh, the advice of teachers and parents. Uh, research has shown that teens with a relationship with an adult role model are more successful than their peers. Another important point is encourage your daughter or son to choose friends wisely. Be interested in knowing who their friends are and from what background they come from. This will assist you in helping your child choose the best friends. Remember, if your child's friends are badly behaved, it is only a matter of time for your child to start behaving in a similar way. Create time to be with your child. As I've told you, I, I was once speaking in a boy's high school, and there is a boy who told me that she, he wants a relationship with the parents. So it is during your interaction with your child that you may note positive or negative behavior in your child. You can therefore address them immediately. Another point that we have said is partner with the teachers of your child. Due to the busy schedule that parents are involved in, they may not fully understand the personalities of their children. It is important to regularly consult the teachers, not only concerning academic performance of your child, but also details of their emotional, social, and I can add spiritual progress. It is important to hold family meetings frequent family meetings, inclusive of your children, during which you openly discuss a number of issues. So you can discuss various issues that are affecting the children. Like you can discuss the menu of the week, the TV programs to watch, books to read, magazines to be bought, choice of friends, drugs and substance abuse, relationships, sexuality, Victor, please mute. Mute the whoever is talking. We can discuss drugs and substance abuse, relationships, sexuality, children's rights. Nowadays, we are talking about children's rights, child abuse, culture, accountability, transparency, openness, obedience to authority, fear of God, HIV, AIDS, and other sexually transmitted diseases. Another point that I'd like to emphasize is it's important to create a routine so as to create a sense of stability. I don't know whether at home you have a time when people wake up, a time when people do household chores, a time for exercises, meal time, and free time. The importance of creating uh, a routine is that when the child changes, as a parent, you can be able to notice, for example, if it is a requirement, we wake up at eight during the holiday and somebody wakes up at two. It means there's something that is happening and you may be able to address it before it takes too long. Acceptance. If you accept the teens, we've been told sometimes they error. So when they error, we need to correct them and also to accept them. Accept them. When you accept teens, they will confide in you, trust you and feel that they belong. Affirmation. It's important to affirm our children. As we are saying, adolescent is a period where most of the young people feel or they, they suffer from low self-esteem because maybe their lives are not progressing like those of their friends. Maybe they have acne or pimples on their faces. Maybe uh, there are some developmental stages that have happened to some, but not them. And that can be a source of low self-esteem. So let's praise them for what they do well and let's affirm them. Let's develop good habits in them. Repeat as often as possible what habits you want instilled in teens. As we have mentioned, be a role model. If teens see that you practice what you preach, they will have no problem obeying your instructions. Consistency. Speak with one voice at home as parents and also in school, speak with one voice with the teachers. It's important to establish limits. Let the teens know what is acceptable behavior and what is undesirable behavior. Sometimes we punish them and we have not even told them that this is wrong. So let's also have time to tell them what is acceptable behavior and what is not instill spiritual values such as love, 
peace, patience, kindness, goodness, humility, self-control, hard work, honesty, faithfulness, joy, persistence, completion of tasks, self-confidence, and high moral values. It's important to give them emotional support. Let the teens know that you are available in case they feel uncomfortable. I've spoken to a number of, uh, of teens and sometimes you realize that even when they need emo emotional support, they are not able to come to the parent. Like uh, when you go to my YouTube a channel, that is Dr. Rebecca Wambua, there is a, a girl I interviewed. She told me she had been raped two years before the time we, we met. And yet for those two years, the mom used to take her to hospital to be treated and she had never told the mom that she was actually raped and that's when the sexually transmitted disease uh, began. So let's, let's build a rapport with our children so that when they are in trouble, they also come to us. Provide as many books as you can to your daughter on issues affecting our children. For, the, for example, there is a book that I wrote and it's called The Wise. Children uh, who are adolescents and young people, they, they have very many whys. They, there are so many things they need to, to, they are seeking answers for. Like, why am I different? You've had the, the young adults here who are with, together with us. One wonders, why am I different? Why has this one broken the voice? Why have I not uh, broken mine? And so on and so forth. What is wrong with having a girlfriend? This is a key question that is asked by those young people or the adolescents, why am I so moody? Can't I just be free to do what I like doing? What is wrong with my friends, with me being with my friends at the, uh, uh, most of the time? What is wrong with taking drugs? About drug abuse, uh, we had a similar webinar like this one and we talked about drug abuse and its effect on teens and preteens. So you may go there and watch the video and you'll be able to get some information. It's important to build the self-esteem of the children. Let the adolescent know that he is fearfully and wonderfully made in spite of what he or she thinks. As I've said, uh, adolescents, uh, they have issues about uh, their esteem, but how do you, over how do you help them uh, to overcome, you affirm them. You tell them that they are fearfully and wonderfully made, that they look okay the way they are. Then it is important to discipline also, rebuke mistakes, correct errors, and reward good actions. Now, parents, I'd like to emphasize on the issue of sex education. I know th there is a lot of uh, discussion about this, especially in Kenya, whether sex education should be introduced in schools or not. But uh, traditionally, our aunties and uncles used to teach us about sex and the effects. But nowadays, the aunts and uncles are not there. So parents, let's be courageous enough and encourage teens to open up and also so uh, sexually uh, questions that are related to sex. Encourage healthy eating habits. You know, at this time they have large appetites. Encourage them also to exercise. So during the holiday, let them also go out and have exercises and, and that. And also uh, prayer is important. Prayer is also important. Let's pray for them. Even as we teach them, let's also commit them to God so that they'll be able to... Uh, to live successful lives. Maybe at this time, I'd like to say that uh, we are parents, we are wondering what are we going to do with your, our children for the two months in Kenya, that is, for the two months that uh, our children are on holiday. So we have organized um, a workshop uh, between from that will run from 5th to 16th on career mentorship for young people. Because young people, adolescents now, they, they, they are curious about their professions or the careers that they want to pursue. So we'd like to give them, uh, to expose them to 13 professionals who will talk to them about uh, different careers. So the session will be online. And the adolescents and young people will interact with 13 professionals from different fields. 
there will be there will there will be discussions on requirements of different professions what is involved in career progression will be tackled they will also be trained on developing an effective cv and they will learn about the do's and don'ts in their job interview and apart from that we'll have a standby counseling psychologist who will answer most of their psychological emotional and social issues as i've said i have a a, a youtube uh, channel and there are certain uh, there are certain topics that i've discussed some through webinars and some through discussions or interviews like one is symptoms of mental illness in teenagers and young adults you may go and check that another one is when loving too much is detrimental to their children we are saying in parenting we need to be firm but friendly we need to be firm but friendly another uh, video is on rescuing teens and preteens from drug abuse another one is on relationship having the importance of having relationships with our children there is another one on peer pressure rape and effect on the on the adolescent or the young adult response to pregnancy by young adults i've talked about the response by uh, a young uh, young adults of the male gender demystifying mental illness trauma and mental health and suicide and mental health so those are some of the areas that we have that we have dealt with and today we are focusing or nurturing the adolescents and young adults so that is just a brief of what is in store or what has happened and where we are moving forward to so do we have any person with a question uh justin says great points from the presenters thank you okay doctor it may be one thing yes that uh, the 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 main reason why i dealt with the parent is because mm -hmm. for the next two months the children are at home mm -hmm. and uh, it is time for the parent to roll up their sleeves mm -hmm. because you know december is usually a busy month with very many holidays and all that so that is why i i i gave a wake up call to the parents i know teachers have the children most of the time mm -hmm. that is why i say the parent the teachers have their children for 9 months but mm -hmm. now for the next two months it is the turn of the parent and they should really roll up their sleeves because if they don't they are likely to lose the the children you also given a very good point on uh, how what the the parents can do with the children let us let us not take the children to the villages and leave them there sometimes they they feel abandoned the the the, the child the your adolescent girl has crossed school and even before they settle in the house you've already packed them and taken them to the grandmother eh? mora talked about that sometimes it is good even for the parent to take a moment a few days they can take leave from work and just be around that child to know what is going on in their lives because as much as the 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 they get they'll get to learn about their tradition and the language and all those other things they may learn in the village there is nothing that beats a parent that beats parental love so sometimes the parents can make sacrifices so that at least they they bring up well rounded well rounded children thank you very much okay thank you all right i'm seeing people saying thanks for the presentation and Leopold uh Oh my yes. god you you forgot me in <laughs> America <laughs> oh, I was sorry. wondering <laughs> Yes you are welcome yeah But I'm patient I was patiently waiting to call on me <laughs> Okay all right Yeah I was having a request Okay 
So we have Leopold uh, who deals with young people, uh, uses games to teach mental health and a productive health. So Leopold, you can just introduce yourself. Leopold is one, one of the facilitators who will be there during the career mentorship uh, program. But now he just wants to tell us a bit of what he's planning. Mm. Welcome. And I'm sorry for that. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, no problem. I'm, um, I'm delighted to be here again. Thank you so much for inviting me. And um yeah, I've, I followed the discussion and the presentation um, uh, very carefully and enjoyed uh, very much to uh, to get this context from from the different um, uh, presenters and the different insights from different perspectives, but always with a with a Kenyan uh, with a Kenyan uh, context, and that is what I find so interesting. I'm. Myself, I'm a German educationalist, but I have also experiences in uh, in, tra in doing training and uh, educational programs in Africa, uh, in West Africa and Francophone Africa, and also in East Africa. So it spans the whole continent. And uh, in fact, in Kenya, um, I um, had the opportunity to launch um, in this. That was in 2017 already uh, the first uh, reproductive health knowledge competition um, uh, with a number of universities um, uh, in Kisumu, in Nairobi, and, uh, and in Mombasa. And uh, we used, uh, uh, we started to use and to experiment with, uh, engage, first of all, in being present in social media, not to leave social media to the crooks and to the fake uh, people and uh, and to that, but being as educators present where the youth is, and I think I made this point in another in another uh, statement um, that it's so important. We have to be there. We don't have to leave them being alone there um, uh, in this uh, environment. Um, I don't share the opinion that it is a dangerous environment. I don't share this opinion. I think it's uh, much more dangerous to to have a walk in uh, downtown Nairobi than, um, than scrolling through the internet. Uh, you know, you can't you you can't get harmed. I mean, you can't get raped. Yes, on the internet. Uh, to the contrary, it provides so much and so rich education and training by now and that needs still to uh utilized and uh to be used um let's say also in an african context um i enjoyed very much listening to what you uh, were talking about the parental um uh, parents advice educating parents and uh, and how how they can uh, go through these difficult times of economic crisis, of lockdowns, uh, uh, pandemics, and what we had experienced in the last uh, two or three years. I think that is very important. But I think it is not enough. It is not enough. And I think what um, Mary Karongo uh, said is very right. We need a concertated, a comprehensive action not just building on parents, but um, there must be the government involved, there must be uh, the legal system involved, and there must be the educational system involved, all three. Why talk I why do I talk about the legal system? Um, we have um, we have this uh, problem of teenage pregnancy. And it's devastating, I would say, it's devastating the countries. Uh, uh, you, I mean, you should know that, that uh, I just made a note here, that um, just last year, 21% of all pregnancies uh, were among adolescents aged 10 to 19. So that is one child, one teenager out of five. I mean, that has tremendous consequences. And I don't think that this can be um, 
that this can be uh, tackled just by parental uh, 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 counseling. So um, to give one example how that can be tackled by the legal system is that, um, you know, that uh, <clears throat> men get be um, taken into responsibility. Yes, here, for, to give you one example, here in Germany, if I father um, a child and I don't want to stay with the girl, I have to pay th about 350 euros every month until the child is, I think, 22 or 24. And this money is paid. So there's no, there, there's no way that you can get out of this, <laughs> out of this payment. Yes, and only in very rare occasions that a man is, I don't know, gets mentally sick or is really is, is really not able to pay that, then the government would pay. So there is a protection of the single mom that does not exist in Africa. And that is a, that is a, a terrible situation, a terrible situation. And unless this legal system and the parliamentarians are not taking up this issue. I mean, you can do all kinds of uh, parental uh, counseling. Uh, the problem will not be solved. So there need to be this policy framework, this legal framework, in order to address to address this. The other issue is, we as educators, we have to be there where the youth is. And I think we are not really there especially not when we talk about social media. Um, I had prepared a very short video clip that I want to uh, show to you that gives you an impression where the youth is and what they are doing in millions on the internet, and that is games. They do games, right? So uh, just a moment, please. This is just a two minutes clip to give you an impression what what is going on there. Can you see my screen now? Can you see it? Yes, Hello? Yes, yes, okay. yes. Okay. Okay, yes. here we go. Work for it every day, work for it. Okay, that's that's already enough and um <clears throat> What you see, what you could see here is a stadium with about 100,000 youths. They came from all over the world. They were part of a gaming Olympics. And just the best teams of them could participate here. And they won very high, high prices. So you could see the excitement and the engagement of the young people in this specific sector. You need to be highly skilled in order to win here. So you need to be trained. You need to spend time. And I wonder why is that sector not used by educators, by education? Yes, yeah, so uh, we leave the use to do this, this is certainly not, uh, does not any harm, I would say. Maybe just, uh, just a, a, a waste of time, maybe one could argue. Um, but this is an example where the youth is engaged, where the youth learns, and um, where they are ready to spend time. And I think we can do better. Now, what do I propose at this point? Um, okay. 
But we started actually in Kenya. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, what you see here is also a celebration, not as bombastic as you could see it in the video clip, but still, these are about, I think, five or six teams of 4,000 German high school students that participated. And, in, and, uh, and share, then you share this one, because this is the, the earlier one. Say again? And share, and share. Stop sharing, then share. Oh, okay. okay. <clears throat> Now, sh now share the, the next one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Now here you see um, a picture that I made actually, or I didn't make it, but I'm, I was there. And um, this is a celebration of the winning teams of a school knowledge tournament on information security. Um, and uh, 4,000 students competed here um, from different schools in Germany in, in this knowledge tournament. It's a, basically a quiz program. And here you see the winning teams. They got prizes like 1,000 euro or 2,000 euro. That was about the price range. And it was amazing to see that a topic that is usually not interesting at all for high school students, which is information security. You know, they just use their phone. They don't care about any, uh, any, uh, uh virus uh, problems or, uh, or scam scammers or what you have there. They just use it. But because this learning program about information security was packaged as a game, as a competition, we got a huge engagement rate uh, and uh, excitement with these students, uh, and they learned because they 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 had to learn in order to win. You have to learn in a knowledge tournament so that you win. So that is that is this mechanism. Now this was already in 2016, and we did it also in 2017. Uh, with the uh, with a couple of th thousand students, but then in 2017 um, we did it also in uh, in Kenya um, and then also here in Ivory Coast. And you can see uh, here at this picture that we did a so-called inception event. So we gathered around 800 students, 200 every two hours in this tent. We introduced the gaming rules and then the students from different uh, universities and also high schools sat on these round tables and played together and competed together now in the subject of reproductive health. Yes. So what, uh, what you can see here is we try to get the youth from... Um, a very typical use action with this gaming, video gaming, computer gaming, using the same methodologies, the same approaches that you find there, but we put in an educational, meaningful context and content. And that is, I think, uh, what we need to do. We need to be there where they are. We need to use the same method, the same methods that they, that that they find interesting and engaging, but add the content that is important for our society and for our educational system. So I want um, to... Uh, make another point, just let me see, I made some notes here. Yeah, anyway, so this is what, these are my two main points. We, there need to be a change in the legal system. Otherwise, it will not be possible to address properly um, the issue of uh, teenage pregnancy. 
Uh, and um, and what you have uh, related to that, like rape and uh, and uh, and uh, violence and and gender issues, they need to be a change in the legal system. Male men have to take responsibilities for their deeds. Yeah, that is not happening right now. And for the educational sector, it is important to go there where the youth is to use to use from an educational point of view with, an edu with educational aims, uh, the social media, it's already happening there. I'm, I mean, this is not new, you know, uh, almost every university now has, has an e-learning program, but it's still um, not enough. And, um, and we need to reinforce our activities in this sector. Yeah, I would appreciate I would appreciate your your comments and your questions, even if it's late. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Leopold. I don't know whether somebody has a topic. Uh, sorry, a comment or a question. Victor, you want to share something? You're sharing your screen. You are, you are muted. Stopping Leopold's, it seems like uh, I was stopping his uh, presentation. Oh, okay. All right. Mm. All right. So if you don't have uh, any comments, uh, what we are saying is that Leopold will have some moment of interaction with the young people who will register for the for the two weeks of career mentorship program and therefore you are we encourage you to enroll your children and it's going to be a very effective session so i don't know whether somebody else has a comment or we are good to go maybe a last one yes uh we realize that some of the distractions that we have in our families can only be effectively be managed by substitution or providing an avenue for them to experience the same things that they are doing in another beneficial way. I humbly asking the parents to register their children. As you have said, it's going to be a very rigorous and a very effective of all ages as stated during the next two weeks starting from fifth. So I employ, I employ everyone, just to know a child, to know somebody, just register them and then the, build them experience. It will cure some of the issues that you may be having. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank mm -hmm. you for that. Okay. If there is no other comment, um, I would like to welcome Phoebe Mora to close with a word of prayer. Maybe before closing, maybe before Phoebe closes, huh? Yes. Uh, this is Joseph. Um, I've enjoyed in terms of uh, the different perceptions and the different contributions and uh, implementations that the partners have been able to present in this particular uh, session and hoping so we'll be able to have even more in regards to the same mm -hmm. and probably uh, formulate like a um, as we learn from what other partners are doing, probably like a space so that we can also be able to contribute uh, also as individuals in, in what we are also envisioning and what we're planning to do. Maybe somebody who is also here can be able to pick probably the good practices, more so like peer learning, uh, mm -hmm. because currently as we speak, we have a small... Um, we have a project that we, we have actually started this October that we intend uh, we've actually we're actually rolling it out more so towards the contribution of a reduction of pregnancies our coverage area however is, mm -hmm. is small comparatively we're not nationwide as such mm -hmm. it's, we, be, we will be focusing on Kilifi County but a sub-county called Kilifi South so more so the target uh, grouping of uh, our project as CFPF, which is Community Health Promotion Fund, 
is targeting the ages of 10 uh, to 19 and also 20 24. You see, this is the critical age that everyone has been contributing about. Yeah. Towards probably access of adolescents or towards health services within the health facilities. We want to be able to support advocacy in multi-sectoral coordination and, you know, supporting of gender issues. Mm-hmm. Um, also providing them with information. So right now we've been partnering with uh, varied um, key personnel, including the Minister of Education. You see, considering this particular cohort is found within schools, so we have to have that particular partnership. So there's a number of, of activities, there's a number of, um, of, of output we tend to make. And then the key aspect that has been brought about is the parent engagement, you know, in terms of um, we can be able to provide information to this particular young person or adolescent, but what happens to the parents? So our programming also intends to be able to involve parents as you talk to the child within schools, we'll also to be able to talk to the parents and formulate and uh, package information to them and also be able to have them cascade this particular information to their fellow parents and have it snowballing. Uh, so such is, is, is what I'm envisioning. Probably somebody may be able to, to pick what we are doing from our end uh, and are we also able to learn from what other partners are doing. So as of now, I'm thankful for this opportunity. I hope Kindly, I'm not going to miss any other. I'm going to leave my email as well and email of my partner. So in case of anything, we will be able to work together and just be able to partner. You know, the beneficiaries are the same. We want to make sure young people have um, this information so that they can be able to make positive choices. Otherwise, thank you so much for your time. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for that uh, information. Yeah. When I keep saying anyone who has a comment or a question, I was inviting such comments like from you and I've shared my email address. You can also reach me. Then we continue with this conversation. So uh, because this session is recorded, we'll be able to share uh, to share the, the video through my YouTube channel so that those who, are, who wanted to participate but were not able will be able to watch uh, later. So we thank you all for taking time to be with us. I know it's not easy, it's a weekend, people are resting, but you sacrifice to be with us and we are very grateful for that. So Phoebe, you can close with a word of prayer. Okay, let's pray. Our loving master, what in heaven, we come before you this evening. We want to thank you, Lord, for this, for that, but as Lord, thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the energy and the good time that we had together, even as we discussed issues that are affecting us as parents and even as young adults, Lord. All we ask from you is that, Lord, you may guide us because we know that you're the greatest teacher of all greatest teachers, but you may come and help us that can be able to know how to maneuver around these uh, issues that we mentioned because I know that you alone made marriage holy and through marriage you get kids and how to raise these kids solely depends on how you'll guide us lord we believe that you're going to help us that you can be able to know every step that you need to take even as we're going to encourage more and more kids on how to handle their own depressions and their own um, negligence and even how to go about their daily lives may you help us may you give us that knowledge that we need and the wisdom to pass on to them lord thank you for all those who came lord today for allowing them to be here with us I pray that you may continue guiding them even as going to depart, that you may be with them wherever they shall be. For I pray this prayer, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.